I'm here today with Natalie Takes from South Dakota State University, who is going to talk to us about a study that she has been working on that measures antibodies within the population. I'm also going to talk to Bonnie Specker today, who will be providing us with an update on everything COVID that's been happening in the region, across the state, nationally, and across the world with COVID-19. Natalie, what do you have for us today? Um, I want to tell uh, people in Brookings about a research study that my graduate student and I have been doing to measure the percent of people in the population that have antibodies for COVID-19. So um, in order to explain to you our results, I want to just define a few words. So usually what we call our study is a seroprevalence study, but that's not a word that a lot of people know. So I want to define those terms and then go on to explain how we did this study. So prevalence is an epidemiological term that is defined as the proportion of persons in a population who have a particular disease or attribute at a specified point in time or over a specified period of time. So um, if we wanted to say how many people currently have COVID-19, we would say how many active cases of COVID-19 are, that would be prevalence. But the question of how many people have had COVID-19 in the last year um, is a little different question. And if you've had COVID-19, most people develop an antibody response to it, meaning that our immune system has responded to the COVID-19 virus and has made proteins called antibodies that circulate in our blood as a memory of the infection. So COVID-19 antibody seroprevalence is the proportion or percentage of persons in a population who have antibodies for COVID-19. So um, I think everybody now realizes that there are a lot of asymptomatic or undiagnosed cases of COVID-19. So even though people get tested with the test, the swab in the nose that detects the presence of the virus in people's nostrils, um, we know that there are some people who didn't get tested or who didn't know that they were sick. Um, so the antibody test will tell us everybody who has been sick and developed an immune response to the virus. So I just wanted to do a really fast explanation of what, how we get antibodies. So in this cartoon here, there's a little orange bacterium. You could also imagine it as a virus, but a pathogen, right, that infects our body and infects our cells. And there are specific cells of our immune system who detect and recognize those pathogens and basically chop it up and present little bits of it called antigens to cells of the immune system. Um, there are T cells and B cells. And what these cells are gonna do is make um, a very specific targeted immune response against this pathogen. B cells are the cells of our immune system that make antibodies, these proteins that can stick to the pathogen and prevent them from coming into our cells. So um, after the antigen presenting cell chops up the pathogen and presents it to the T cells, the T cells activate the B cells to make antibodies. And these um, then go on to make a whole bunch of antibodies that can stop the infection. Um, so that's why if you've been infected, we can treat also infections with antibodies or why we wanna have a vaccine that will give us these antibodies without having the actual infection. But one of the things to notice here is this memory B cells. These are cells that can stay in our blood for years or even decades and continue to make antibodies. So that if we were ever to get exposed to the pathogen again, if we're ever to get exposed to COVID-19 after we've been infected or after we've been vaccinated, then they're gonna keep making antibodies that will stop any new virus that come into our body. So if we wanna know how many people have been infected with COVID-19 in our population, we can see how many people have these antibodies. And that will tell us. So basically the antibody is a way of fighting off the infection. It's also a way of protecting ourselves from new infections. But for my purpose as a researcher, it's a way of um, seeing who's been exposed and had a prior infection of COVID-19. So in order to um, track our population over time, we coordinated with um, 
healthcare facilities in um, Eastern South Dakota and Western Minnesota. So we had a total of five healthcare facilities that participated in our study. And healthcare workers who worked at those facilities could get their blood drawn um, starting back in May. And then they also took a survey that we asked them about their demographic characteristics and various aspects of their job or their exposure to COVID-19. So we drew them at the very beginning of the pandemic as soon as we were able. Then we did them at the end of the summer and then we did them again, most of the people for the third draw were drawn at the end of November or the beginning of December. So um, we drew their blood and then we used a test in the lab to see if they had specific antibodies for COVID-19. And we also asked them on the survey if they had been diagnosed with having COVID-19. So what we learned is that back in May, only one person who was we drew blood from had antibodies to COVID-19 out of the 350 healthcare workers in our study population. Then we waited a, a few months and we tested them again, the same people over again, to see if any, any of them had developed COVID-19 antibodies. So in August, four out of 273 healthcare workers from these five healthcare facilities in Eastern South Dakota and Western Minnesota, or 1.5%, had antibodies to COVID-19. Then in November and the beginning of December, we tested their blood again, and we found that 33 of 241 people tested, or 13.6%, had antibodies to COVID-19. So um, we were surprised to see that this is a relatively known low number. These healthcare workers, uh, over 70% of them reported being exposed to COVID positive patients through their, their jobs, but only 13.6% of them had antibodies indicating that they'd actually had the disease. So um, another way of saying that is 86% did not have any evidence of, pro of antibodies suggesting they had not had COVID-19. So one of the things that I want to emphasize to folks is that that's a lot of people who are still susceptible to COVID-19. So even though it feels like this has been going on forever and that so many people have had it, there are still a very lot of people who have not had COVID-19 yet. Oh yeah, so here's the thing. 71% of the study population had contact with a COVID positive patients prior to their draw. So had had, had the opportunity to be exposed. And um, one of the things that we can learn from that is that their infection control procedures that are used in the clinics and hospitals where these healthcare workers work are pretty effective at limiting the transmission of COVID-19. So those are things like the hand washing protocols, masking protocols, shielding protocols, and things like, and also the air um, circulation measures that are taken in those facilities to prevent the virus from being present in the air for very long. And then another question that people have is, um, how many people have antibodies for COVID-19 but didn't know they had been infected? Now, the healthcare worker population was a heavily tested population. If they ever had a fever or if they ever had sick, they would get tested through their employers. So I would assume that most of them who had felt sick had been tested. So um, of the 33 positives after the third draw, 24 of those had been diagnosed via the swab test as having had COVID-19, so that's 73%. Seven of our positive, seven people who had antibodies had not been diagnosed, so that's 21% of the population probably had an asymptomatic undiagnosed infection. And we had two people that didn't respond to the survey, so we don't know whether or not they were diagnosed or undiagnosed. The conclusions that we've drawn from the study are that at the beginning of December, about 14% of the study pop population, which is made up of healthcare workers in Eastern South Dakota and Western Minnesota, had antibodies to COVID-19, indicating that they had a prior infection with COVID-19. And one of the big takeaways from that is that infection control measures in healthcare settings were effective at limiting the viral transmission. Um, and also that 21% of people who had antibodies in their blood for COVID-19, suggesting they had a prior infection, had not been diagnosed, and these people may have had an asymptomatic infection.